what are you trying to tell me? Like, mm -hmm. I can't be a strong, independent woman. You know, you're telling me I need to be more submissive in order to attract a man because mm -hmm. that messaging is out there. I know. But I I think it's a balance. I, I think it's being able to have that soft side. Mm -hmm. And most men, I think, you can speak as one, would agree that like you would seek that in a woman. Welcome to the Emily and Todd podcast. Today, we're talking about how masculinity and femininity has changed over the years and how it impacts the dating market and what men can do about it. Before we get started, please like and comment on this video as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. So, Todd, masculinity and femininity. I feel like this is a hot topic that a lot of people, especially in the dating world, mm -hmm. are talking about. Yes. Um, you know, I'm just thinking of, you know, a uh, Example would be all the women that are typically on the Fresh and Fit podcast. Oh, <laughs> you know, like they just like they they take women from the, from the beaches of Miami or the clubs up. of Miami, and you know most of them are probably intoxicated or high, and they're you know th they're sh demonstrating those as that's what women are today. Where to me, that's I don't I don't see those type of women. I see no. you know it's it's and uh, you know again how many of them are even past 25. Right. Yeah. They're just, they're just there for a fun time. Yeah. Basically. Well, and to get ridiculed essentially. <laughs> Who would sign up for that? 25 year old, I guess. Or 20 year old. <laughs> well, I think once you get to the point of you're 25, you're going to say, I don't want to be on the show. This is, you know, um, unless you're going to debate them maybe, but it's something yeah. where, you know, when you're talking about that, you know, type of femininity and what you will see typically on the show is these women who, you know, are kind of the new age feminist, mm -hmm. but that's where to me personally, it's gone too far where it ends up becoming masculine. When I say masculine in that sense, what I mean is aggressive. Oh yeah. I can definitely see that. And moving away from femininity for sure. Like mm -hmm. I think that there's less Gen Z uh, women that want babies even like they mm -hmm. they want to hold off on it or hold off on marriage women have are in university more they're you know getting degrees but at the same time it's something where they're taking on these masculine features like hookup culture like we've discussed mm -hmm. before and you know just kind of being very dominant and i think between that and guys being soft mm -hmm. i hate to say it like that but it's something where you have all this confusion going on about who does what. Oh, so much confusion. I mean, you have to talk about every single detail. I do think that it's it's hard to balance, especially when it comes to like who does what, mm -hmm. you know, in a relationship or what's expected in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because back in the day, like my parents' age, they just kind of knew and mm -hmm. they just did. Yes. They knew what was expected. It was very simple. Mm -hmm. May not have been easy, may not have been ideal, was not ideal really, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they knew at least their roles and what was expected of them versus I do think that like my generation was kind of the balancing point mm -hmm. of both, but there's still like there were so many struggles in my generation still, I think. Sure. Of balancing who does what and actually communicating every little detail. I think that when it, when it comes to careers, we're living in a, a, a different you know generation and in a different time period. And it's something that is important to say, you know, that's okay. We can, we can both work. Well, I do think that, I think that message is definitely being driven mm -hmm. to young women is to go out and get your degree and get mm -hmm. a career and don't rely on a man. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if like later on, if that, almost creates more of a challenge because then it's like a flip of a switch when she wants to then settle down and have kids. Mm -hmm. And then I think actually like what my generation has been having difficulty with for women is they've done that. They've had the career, then they have kids and now they're expe expected to do everything. Are they going to do kids work mm -hmm. and take care of the household? Or how are they going to figure out how to balance that? Are they going to decide to stay at home? Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of in their feminine completely. Mm -hmm. And how does that adjustment work? Because I, I do well, think I that's think a that, hard adjustment. Absolutely. I think it's going to be, for every couple, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. I think some couples are both going to want to kind of pursue their careers and have their kids in daycare. 
mm-hmm. you know, for their entirety. And if that's the way they want to do things, that's up to them. I think some are probably, generally speaking, the women are going to probably take some time off or maybe drop to part time, you know, for a time period and then maybe go full time, mm-hmm. you know, once the kids get to a point of maybe, you know, middle school or high school. Mm-hmm. So I think that those all can be negotiated. But, you know, if, if, if half the marriages aren't working out, it's one of those things where there's a lot of men, I know the mass people are going to hate this, but like who just do abandon their kids. Yeah. And so it's like one after of those th- divorce. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I've known a lot of women over the years that are single moms that aren't getting any support at all. And so it's something that if you don't have a career to fall back on, if you're a single mom, you're in big trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big trouble. I mean, at that point, you're looking towards probably the government for assistance. Yes. And that's just in a spot where you don't want to be. No. <laughs> and at least in the U.S. here, when the government takes care of you, they don't really take care of you. They give you the <laughs> bare minimum in order to survive. survive. Yeah. And so I've, you know, I've worked in that that field as far as understanding, you know, the amounts of money that they get. Yeah. And it's something, it's, it's very, very, it's very low. It's poverty. Well, going back to the communication and gender roles, like I think that's also why it's so highly important, especially once couples are kind of diving into getting married and having kids, mm-hmm. is having those discussions ahead of time. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Because like if a man is in the relationship and he's kind of just expecting that she's going to want to decrease her hours or maybe stay home for a few years to raise the child. But she's not thinking that at all because the status quo up until that point has been 50-50 between her and her soon-to-be husband Mm -hmm. or current husband. I I mean, that's where, like, they could both have these two assumptions and you don't want to wait until you're actually having a baby to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, In itself, too, like if she thinks that he should be doing 50-50, right, like almost everything is being pushed right now is for women and men to Mm -hmm. just be split 50-50 for everything, Mm -hmm. which has its pros and cons. But I think you have to like you have to make that work for you and what you want along with Mm -hmm. your husband. Mm -hmm. And if you get to that point and you're telling him, no, this is what's fair, you need to like be with the child 50 percent of the time, too. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, is he making a change in his masculinity in order to do that? And is he really okay with that, you know, taking on that caregiver role? I think, and this is where I think that millennial kind of has it right, Mm -hmm. is that that should be the ideal model. It's just 50-50 down the line. And that includes childcare. Because the thing is, is that if you're a man and you have a a son or a daughter, it's one Mm -hmm. of those things where being involved in their life and showing them the masculine side of life is going to be important. And, you know, I think of the healthiest couple I've ever worked with. I worked for them for like 12 years. I started seeing them when they were just dating. And now they have uh, two kids together and they've been married, you know, for 10 years. And they completely divide everything. Every, every everything. everything. And it's something where it really, really works. Yeah. And it's something that they're, they only check in with me at this point. And it's mostly just because they want to, we want to kind of see what's go- going on in each other's lives, but they, they're a well-oiled machine and cause they both have taken on, taken on roles that are both very f- feminine and masculine. So for example, he, uh, was a, was, used to be a boxer. And so mm-hmm. he's teaching his daughter how to box and like seeing f- videos of her on Facebook, she's That's like cool. six years old, boxing is really cool. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where she is very feminine, but it's something where they also have a son and I see him, you know, doing household chores with her. I can see how that's working, right? Especially if it's more of a 50-50 with time. Mm-hmm. Oh, they both have jobs too, full-time jobs. Wow. But what they're the activities that they're doing with their children, mm-hmm. you think are are different? It sounds like they're different. And they share the, the the same things at times too. So, for example, they all might be in his boxing gym, oh, okay. you know, as a family doing that, and then they're all preparing and cleaning up after dinner. And so, I think that it can be done because I've seen it. 
but it's not going to be kind of like those traditional roles where men just kind of do all the work outside, women do the work inside, <laughs> you know, like men uh, are the ones who are just the breadwinners and women take care of the children. Those days are gone and they're not going to come back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so many people are still trying to fight for that. Yes. And, and I, so that's so interesting. I'm glad to hear that like somebody's doing that successfully mm -hmm. where it's a 50 50 split on things because i've held the belief that you know there's certain things that i might enjoy doing more mm -hmm. than my significant other yeah and that you know maybe it's not a complete 50 50 split mm -hmm. but it's a balanced split yes like i think that could work for people too yeah it doesn't have to be exactly 50 50 but generally yeah. speaking that you have you know, if, if, if you both have careers and it's something where there's, you know, household duties and child care to be provided, that you figure out what to split that up evenly. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, again, I look at the, the, the generations kind of before me, and I don't see a lot of guys participating in a lot of those activities. But at the same time, it's going to Gen Z, going to the opposite direction, and then them not kind of having many masculine traits at all that ends up becoming you know it's like the roles have almost reversed almost in every way <laughs> i mean you think about for example like the, you know the kind of the push on men's side right now is to be your best self to get into the gym to looks max to mm -hmm. do all this other stuff what are, what are women being told except who you are you're beautiful no matter what size you are any size. <laughs> Any size, right? Yeah. And But that, in my parents' or grandparents' generation, that was the exact opposite. The like, guys weren't doing anything. They were in the <laughs> gym, you know, unless, and they were just, uh, you know, coming home and probably smoking cigarettes and drinking <laughs> beer. And the women were the ones who were expected. My mom was a flight attendant for Pan Am. She had to weigh in before she oh, went on any flight. Oh, my gosh. It's like that TV show that they had for a little while about Pan Am. Yeah. But it's it's a hundred percent true. Oh my gosh! And so, you know, can you imagine that happening now? No, <laughs> so, that would never happen yeah. today. <laughs> but do you see how like the roles were reversed? But they're not. It's still it's still unbalanced in a different manner. Yeah. Well, it's gone like the other way a bit. You know, it's gone the block. exact other way. Yeah. yeah. And and you're saying we kind of we need that in between, which makes sense yes. to me. <laughs> I just I think that I think both people. Both genders should say, what do I want to do with my life and be able to be able to do that. And then I think both genders for each other and for themselves should say, you know, I want to look my best, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, cause you are, you're attracted to someone for a reason. And then if they just let themselves go, that's a different version of that person. Well, what role do you think masculinity and femininity have with attraction? Because a lot of times it's more of that like opposites attract in many ways where whatever you don't have or you lack, you know, you see that in somebody else and you're attracted to it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that polarity, right, with masculinity and femininity that yes. can be there that causes that attraction. Um, or is there like a healthier way to be attracted to somebody without necessarily needing? You no, know? I, th I think, it, see, this is where I think a lot of people get confused is that I think you can be feminine and also be strong and educated. <laughs> yeah. For women to be more masculine, that's obviously not attractive for guys. No, <laughs> right? not at all. And, and so, you know, I, I, and I think it depends on th to the extremes that it's taken. If right. it's something where if, if a woman shows competency and she says, you know, I can take care of this, whatever it may be, that, that to me is attractive, but if, you know, versus just kind of being that, you know, traditional woman to me, honestly, when it comes, comes to like, when I hear that word traditional woman, I just kind of hear boring. Like I like a little woman with a little fight in her, you know, yeah. not a lot of fight, just a little. <laughs> it's all about that balance. <laughs> yes, exactly. But, but, but it's also who's, who's competent. And I'm not saying traditional women are competent, but for example, if they had to, negotiate something that they could go do that right if you're not if you're not home you know because the the old line when i was growing up was wait till your father gets home you know oh, i like, got that too <laughs> you got that too right yeah uh -huh. so but it's something where if a woman was home at the time and she didn't use that line she actually disciplined the children like to me again that shows strength 
I think where it goes too far is the fact of, you know, of, of women getting to the point of saying, okay, I'm going to date like men. I'm going to involve myself in hookup culture. And, you know, I'm not going, and if some women don't want to have families or children, you know, good, that's fine. But it's something that I'm wondering if they're going to really be happy or they're going to, you know, because mm -hmm. the, the largest percentage of people right now that are on antidepressants are women between 45 and 55. That's interesting. And I bet a lot of those women are probably single and maybe married to their career. Do you and think that's kind of around the age of menopause too. Mm -hmm. That probably plays a role. Yeah. Right. And sure. the change of hormones, mm -hmm. I would think. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it's like a whole life transition, right? Mm -hmm. So it might also be like relationship wise. Yes. That they're unhappy. Well, if they ever did want to have children, you know, it's <sighs> too late. That's too late. Yeah. And so it's something that I think that's probably a lot of, you know, kind of what's going on. It's, it's, it's complex. It's multi-layered. But I think it's something where this can be, I think the first thing we have to do is what we're doing right now is just actually talking about it, but being reasonable about it, not being, you know, okay, we're going to go back to the fifties and, you know, not listening to the Andrew Tates of the world, expect, except for, you know, he has some good messaging. He he does. Like some of the core of his messages are are good. But when he says women are property, for example, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like it's, go too, it's going too far. Right. It's like, again, we're not going to go back in time. It doesn't work like that. We got to go forward. So what right. we have to figure out, though, is what is the new gender role? What's the healthy way to, to live? Right. Because I think that everyone agrees that what's happening right now is not working mm -hmm. as well as it could. Right. So they're seeking answers. And when they hear people like Andrew Tate talk about the old times, like they are just seeing that as a possible solution and mm -hmm. they hook onto it. Yes. But I totally agree that that is not a solution. Like there needs to be middle ground, I think, in, in when we discuss this mm -hmm. and in the solutions. Yes. Because I think that a lot of people can get triggered easily, too, mm -hmm. when we're talking about masculinity and mm -hmm. femininity. Because I think a lot of women will hear that as, you know, what are you trying to tell me? Like, mm -hmm. I can't be a strong, independent woman. You know, you're telling me I need to be more submissive in order to attract a man. Because mm -hmm. that messaging is out there. I know. But I I think it's a balance. I, I think it's being able to have that soft side. Mm -hmm. And most men, I think, you can speak as one, would agree that, like, you would seek that in a woman. Yeah. Well, I would say, honestly, the most the relationship that I was in the most that I got the most fulfillment out of yeah. was a woman who was very intelligent and also very educated and had a career. Mm -hmm. And it was something where I have dated and been in relationships and lived with women who were much more traditional. And honestly, it's something that they were just kind of boring. <laughs> they didn't really add a lot to my life. I can have a conversation like you and I are having right now. Yeah. In dating, it's kind of the flip, right? Mm -hmm. Is that Guys are typically expected to put in a ton of effort, mm -hmm. you know, dinner date on the first date. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these expectations that we've heard from women mm -hmm. that are more of those traditional expectations. Yes. So, you know, if we're talking about finding more middle ground in general. Well, this is where <laughs> I really believe that if, if women truly want equality, then women should be able to go out, out as for numbers, I think that they should be willing to pay, you know, even though it wouldn't be my style as far as paying on the first date, for example, it's something that I think, you know, a woman is invested in you if she puts money on the table mm -hmm. and if she has a career, she has the ability to put money on the table. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason that it shouldn't be 50, 50 in the dating process as well. And I think that's where we're stuck because the thing is, is that women want careers, but they don't, they still want men to be traditional yes. when it comes to dating. Yes, absolutely. That's and you what can't I have see. it both ways though. I don't think. Because you can't. Then, because then it ends up putting more stress and pressure on the men, just like all the men are expected to improve themselves in all areas of their life. When women are just expected to show up, they are the table. That's, they are the table. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's so hard because 
women, I think, get away with it because they have those options, mm -hmm. right? And men can fall into it because they are lacking, or, or at least they feel like they lack options. Well, they do lack options. They and, do. And it's, be, you know, it's because of the dating apps. So really it's... But dating apps are going away. They aren't going away. So what's going to motivate women to 50-50 split things is understanding, I would say, is understanding that that's the healthier way and you're kind of, you're setting that benchmark. Because, yeah. I, I mean, I think that for women that just are pushing the traditional stuff, well, you're more likely to end up with a more traditional man, right? Because mm -hmm. he's going to be doing those things that mm -hmm. you like naturally. But then if you're kind of this, as a woman, you're wanting the best of both worlds. You want that traditional man when you're dating, but then flip 50-50 when yes. you're in a relationship. Yes. Are you really going to achieve that flip? Like, no. probably not. No. And, and then you're just going to be with this man and you're going to be like trying to change him. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to change him into being less traditional. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening a lot with, you know, the women that are, and I totally understand, I feel bad for these women that are in bad situations where they're not supported and they have kids mm -hmm. And they're doing so much and mm -hmm. he's, you know, not picking up the workload. Yes. But like for people that are dating right now, is there a way to kind of prevent that situation? And I would say it's. You well, know, I mean, for the, the two women that are watching this, I think, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I think, you know, it's really about saying, okay, I've, you know, if I really want to get a good guy, I have to say to, say to myself that I can be my strong independent woman, but also be feminine. And if, if I'm going to expect, you know, kind of those gender roles in the beginning, I'm going to at least be appreciative of that. 